Hi, I'm Ari, I'm the Oak Witch, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about how you can make your own magical correspondences. The wonderful world of witchcraft is full of so many varying tools and ingredients, including herbs, flowers, crystal stones, and sometimes we can come across a certain object and we don't necessarily have readily available information about its magical use. So what do we do then? Well, we can create our own correspondences. So witchcraft is a journey that is so personal. You know, our practice shapes us, but we also shape our practice. And this is where UPG comes into play. UPG is unverified personal gnosis and this just describes the concept of having this personal experience or feeling about something you know be it a, a tool or a ingredient a deity or a spirit and not necessarily having the same experience that everyone else is having so this is not necessarily something which is backed up by other sources or other witches or occultists it's revelation that has come to us and it's true for us but might not necessarily be true for other people and that's completely okay because witchcraft is a very personal journey so bear this in mind when it comes to creating your own correspondences why not it's completely okay if you come across a herb which you don't necessarily agree with the correspondences that it's been given and shared by other witches that's that's okay that's how you feel and that is completely valid this is where you use your intuition you get creative and with that being said here are some factors to consider when you're building your own personal correspondences so first of all you might want to look at color color magic is something that is really commonly used within witchcraft and it's quite easily understood do a quick google search on color correspondences within witchcraft and they'll easily come up but look at the associations each color has had do they resonate with you is there anything which stands out to you perhaps when you're looking at a color you might want to associate it with objects in day-to-day -day life which bring about that meaning for example brown brown is very much seen across nature in our soil in the tree bark so you can definitely see that association with grounding so yeah, take the time to reflect with colours. Just sit down and maybe make some word maps and just see what comes to you. So the next thing to consider when creating your correspondences is patterns. Uh, and this goes along the same idea of aesthetics, um, but maybe look at what resides within the object. You know, are there waves, polka dots, stripes? Are there cross hatches? So reflect on what certain patterns mean to you. When you look at stripes, do you think of columns do you think of order you know when you think about waves do you picture ocean waves or do you picture sound waves um so you can do all these thought maps and really sit and reflect and meditate in a way on what these patterns make you feel what jumps out to you and you can go with that the next factor to consider is shapes and this can lead to aesthetics when you think about uh for example a plant is it really tall and skinny or is it quite round and is it curvy and think about what that means to you and it sounds a bit silly but i think it's about really reflecting in and if you come up with a meaning and you feel a bit silly in the process it doesn't matter it still has that meaning to you and it's still magical i use this example in my budget witchcraft video which i'll link above um, but think about the ergonomic fit. When you have a stone, for example, in your hand, does it feel grounding? Does it feel heavy? Does the heaviness feel grounding? Or does it feel really light? Think about how it fits in your hand. That's why I think crystal palm stones are quite good for some people because they can just fit in your palm and that can be comforting in and of itself in combination with already prescribed associations or correspondences. The next factor you could consider um, could be the texture of the object. So this combines the aesthetics and the ergonomics and you could think about whether or not the object is quite matte, matte and touch, or whether it's quite coarse and rough, or is it really velvety or is it really soft? And maybe you look at a plant, does it have thorns? And if you think about thorns in particular, thorns are defence mechanisms for the plant. And that in itself is just protective. And you could link this to spikes on a cactus as well. So there are so many different things you could think about when it comes to how 
it actually feels um, and you can use that as a way to form a correspondence. So the next one is olfactory or smell. So think about, I mean, if, if the object does have a smell, I guess, or a noticeable smell at least, and you see this a lot with like flowers, for example, or even certain herbs. Um, so you can safely make sure that you're not, you know, ingesting through your nose anything toxic or poisonous. Be careful um, when you're doing this. But of course, um, you can smell the object and you can see what smells come to you. Does it remind you of something? I often find that certain smells bring about a memory um, from childhood and that then can be your association or your correspondence. Does something remind you of home? Does something remind you of what your mum used to make for dinner or, you know, etc, etc. You can go through all these different types of things that come to you, these emotions, these memories, um, these thoughts, and you can use that as a way to build your correspondence. And this does take a degree of meditative reflection um, it might not come to you straight away and that's completely okay don't uh, get too disheartened if you're really seeing you're really trying to think of something because I think sometimes your mind can just sabotage itself and form blocks when you're like trying really hard um, so this might take weeks this might take days or months and that's okay you know it's a journey after all it doesn't need to happen straight away and this doesn't go for just smell this goes for any any factor that you're considering when you're building a correspondence they all may take time to process and to come to you and that's okay don't don't get too disheartened and the next factor you could consider is sound and of course this can look really different depending on the object for example if you have some bells that obviously makes a specific sound um, it's designed to make a sound but of course if you have different bells for example different sounds that the bells uh, produce can make you feel differently you know a high-pitched sound versus a low-pitched sound um, may spur out different feelings in you um, if it's just a regular old plain object you could just tap it and I guess this could link back to your feeling how it feels when you tap it or touch it um, and then you could go with that you know it may look a little bit ridiculous but if it works for you it works for you and that's you know all that matters another thing which has just come to mind is if you're outside um where there's minimal noise disturbance for example if you're if you're in nature if you're by a tree and it's a particularly windy day you could listen to the sound that the trees make in the wind when they sway um and go with that feeling as well and really meditate on that uh, i don't know why i'm making <laughs> these hand gestures these are just the trees i guess but anyway um there there are also youtube videos i'm sure of nature and different sounds of different uh, animals as well but i guess nature trees blowing in the wind you can look that online i'm sure there's stuff on youtube as well the next three factors for tips are more um, research based so just bear that in mind that this is a bit more academic or you know requires research so history or historical uses you could definitely look at especially if this is a man-made object you could look at you know when was it invented what was it initially used for and go with that you know if this is a plant um, look at history of the plant there are loads of books out there that go through this um, you could look at crystals and you could look at historical uses of certain gemstones or certain minerals and for example um, I'm writing an article for a magazine called the Pagan Dawn and just a, just a little hint of what I'm writing about is um, in ancient Roman era or period um they'd have these intaglio oh my gosh I'll, I'll i'm probably pronouncing it wrong but i'll i'll put it um, intaglio rings and these are rings which are essentially carved or engraved and they'll have certain engravings of certain gods for example um aries or tai chi or um nike um so it is said that Roman soldiers would wear them into battle and thus certain correspondences have come for certain gemstones, for example carnelian 
is a carved stone and Kanye is quite a commonly uh, found gemstone that was engraved by ancient Romans. So there is things like that you could look at in history and that does take a degree of research um, and I'll find the paper for the Intarsia rings that I'll put it down below um, that I found for that. Uh, so yeah you could look at history and you could look at how they use these certain objects and what that may bring to you and what that may make sense to you in terms of a correspondence. The second to last factor which I'm going to talk about is medicinal uses and now this is great for plants especially your local plants. Again warning be careful do your research on safe plants non-toxic plants know what you're dealing with research the ecology of the plant and make sure you're not ingesting anything that will make you ill or worse so be careful however researching medicinal herbalism um, isn't necessarily bad if you're just researching so yeah you can go into plants and herbs and flowers um, roots and bark and their medicinal uses throughout history as well there's links to history uh, and it's also links to folklore which I'm going to be talking about in a minute um, and you can come up with correspondences there especially when you're looking at certain medicinal properties which clearly give its magical correspondences so for example like calming nervines um, like in lavender and they're definitely linked to um, more anti-anxiety correspondences or calming correspondences so you know it does kind of make sense and it does link so there is that as well you could go with and lastly is folklore so you can read some folk tales and again this is really present in plants if you're looking at there are there's loads of folklore behind different plants and do some reading do some research this does take a degree of analysis especially if you're looking at the poetry and the language um, but you can build your correspondences that way just looking at folklore of certain plants get an understanding of the overall broader picture of the plant not necessarily just the one word that's been ascribed to it in a magical association get a broader picture from its historical it's medicinal and it's folklore use and ecological use um, so yeah folklore is a great place to look especially if you want to look at your local folklore of wherever you reside in or your cultural or ethnic background so yeah that's all i can really think of for now um but i just want to say think outside of the witchy box you know yes there are great books being released about magical associations and encyclopedias um and that's amazing and that may work for you and you may want to just stop there because it works and that's fine and that's not an issue but of course there are some things which you know are nice to expand upon i think the point of this video is to say that you can find magic outside of the normal witchy spaces or witchy box that we kind of put ourselves in um you know magic is something which is I, to me, I think it's something that is everywhere. You can find magic in, in a lot of things in our earth. So when building your personal correspondences, I think it's important to bear that in mind. You don't necessarily have to go by uh, an encyclopedia that you've bought from a witchy author, which they're great, they're amazing, don't get me wrong. Um, but also you can expand beyond that if it makes sense to you to do so. So get creative use that intuition and start building your personal experiences you know you don't have to just go by what everyone else says correspondences are good and associations are there for a reason um but it's not a rule you know you don't have to <laughs> follow these associations if they don't make sense to you um and that's okay and that's all that i wanted to say really if you have any of your own upg any of your own personal correspondences that maybe might not be shared by everyone else i'm really interested and let me know down below in the comments i'd love to hear your experiences and uh yeah that's it for me and i'll see you in the next video bye